Good day to you all. Welcome to All Things Writing. As always, I am your host, Brian the Writer. I'm happy you've decided to spend a little time with us today. Um, and I mean that, you know, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, you are kind enough to spend a little bit of time with me, and I appreciate it. I re really, really do. Um, but do you know who is also thrilled that you stop by and are spending a little bit of time with us? This month's show sponsor, Dale Kesterson. Dale is a wonderful, wonderful, brilliant author, uh, brilliant writer that I met through Jumpmaster Press, by the way. Uh, she's a former guest of the show. She's the author behind the uh, Lauren K. Mysteries series. Uh, I have it from a very trusted source, by the way, that Lauren K. is coming back. So you've got one, the first book, the second book, now the third book. We're going to talk about the first book, by the way, a little bit later on. Uh, she's going to solve a crazy mystery, another crazy mystery. But who knows a handbag? Who knew that a handbag would go so well with an evening filled with murder? Lauren Kay does, indeed. Uh, so look out for that. Uh, Dale Kesterson's new book should be out. I think it's out next year. I will double check on that and get back to you, but I know it's not very long away. Uh, it'll be out there on Jumpmaster Press. If you have not gone to the Jumpmaster Press website, what are you waiting for? Go over jumpmasterpress.com. Trust me, you'll like it. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what do you think is the most frustrating thing about being a writer? Okay, so I have my own opinions on the topic, and that's largely what, what actually I'm going to talk about today. Uh, if you ask probably a dozen off authors, you're probably going to get 18 different responses to that, that question. There's a lot of things that can be so super frustrating about being an author. In this line of work, if you are not prepared or a little bit of frustration, you're kind of in the wrong line of work. I've seen people get into writing and become just so, so angry and unhappy with, you know, being a writer and having to deal with all the little things that go on here and there and everywhere. That, that's okay. Uh, calm down. Calm down. It's not so bad. Um, but there are things that, that drive you nuts. When you consider that we are trying to make a living by playing with our fictitious friends, little friends, little voices in our heads, um, you would think that, how could it possibly be frustrating? So I decided that today we're going to go over, I think I got like six things that uh, drive me crazy about being a writer. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm a little tired. It's been a it's been a rough couple of days. Um, I haven't been sleeping all that well, and that's owing to something's wrong with my bed. I've got a sleep number bed, and it's leaking a little bit. I, we've had it for over ten years, so that can happen from time to time. So I'm gonna have to get that fixed so I can get a decent night's sleep here sooner or later. But I digress. Uh, I want to thank. Uh, a couple of people. I've got them on my list here in front of me. Uh, big shout out to anybody who came to the Haunted Screams convention in Hampton, Virginia. It was amazing how many different people I met. How many? It was actually amazing how many fans I had stopped by. So for those of you that did stop by, thank you guys so very much. I really, really appreciate it. The uh, the show support the effort it to me it's a it's just great it's just fantastic so I appreciate it. Um, it honestly actually I think I set a record for number of books sold in a weekend. We were very very busy and I really appreciate that. There was one point we had like a line going, and uh, and my my hand was getting tired from all the signatures. But that's okay. It's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have because. At the end of the day, I like to be able to share my uh, share my passion with all of you, which is kind of why I do all things writing in the first place. I'm really just sharing my passion. Speaking of passion, I say again, keep in mind that by the end of the year, we're actually moving over to an all YouTube platform. Uh, financially, it's just a better decision. You also get to see the video. It takes all of my disparate pieces of media and puts them into one nice place. Uh, I need to do more on my Patreon site. Actually, I'm going to be putting more things up there. 
as soon as I have a little bit of extra time and I get a little bit more sleep and I'm not quite as groggy as I am right now, uh, I do want to... Oh, let me let me grab something really, really quick. I think you guys are going to like it. For those of you who can see me online, uh, you can see me at uh, uh, on the YouTube channel. On the That's another reason to go to YouTube. You can see me there. I want to show you guys something really, really cool. Uh, I, I have one of these for a while, and I finally got around to doing him. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm still getting him ready. I want to think. Horror Show Jack. I, I have to thank Horror Show Jack for uh, these lovely things. See, they're, uh, they're actually dental. Uh, dental material they use to make these wonderful things. He's been doing this for a while, and he's very, very good at it. For any of you who get out and see Horror Show Jack uh, do his stuff and his team there, you can get a wonderful pair of things. Children of the night, what music they make. Well, anyway, um, so these are a lot of fun, well worth it. The cool part is they're literally just caps, so watch this. They're, uh, they're just caps that fit right in your teeth. So they're, uh, once they're in there, they're actually in there pretty good. So um, I love it. I love it. I think they're very, very cool. So, okay. And enough about my, my random musings for the day. Uh, thank Horror Show and Jack and his Merry Band of Misfits. I love those guys. I've been hanging around, hanging out with them for quite a while. Um, when I go to shows, love those guys. Okay. These are legit. Well, these things are legit. Well done. It's not like, you know, the ones you put in your mouth, little plastic ones. No, these are actually like dental material. Uh, they're, they're very, very hard and they, uh, they fit perfect. Okay. Onward, onward ho, as they say. The things that drive Brian the writer nuts about writing in general. Now, remember that these are very personal. Uh, they're not, these are not things that, um, you know, everybody's going to have in common, right? There are some people that will have some in common, but not me. Number one, self-editing. I hate self-editing. Now, I know... I know self-editing is part of the process. What I'm referring to is before you send the material off to your editor or your publisher, uh, you have to go through and you've got to find like all the nitpicky little things. You should not shove garbage in the face of your editor. You should take a little bit of time to go through it and just make sure, you know, you're doing things correctly and not have any obvious mistakes or anything like that. To me, that's very, very important. Um... We all write that first draft very, very poorly. Uh, it, it's just the way it works. You know, you've got half-finished sentences. You've got thoughts that should be up uh, three more paragraphs or down two more paragraphs, and uh, you, it was an afterthought, and you just sort of plunked it on there. You could be exhausted like I am and write crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense in any kind of logical way. You can have you know all kinds of things. Go through and clean that stuff up. But it is a pain to go through all that. But it has to be done. It has to be done. Just the way it is. Number two. I will tell you that I absolutely hate waiting for editing. Good editing takes time. It just takes time. My current editor that I use for my indie work, uh, she does an amazing job does an amazing job. Uh, she actually goes through three different passes of the material uh, with me, and there's a lot of things in there that need to be fixed. Uh, her first pass through is like a reconstructive surgery uh, to a certain extent. I always, I jokingly say that editors live off the tears of writers. Jokingly, maybe they really do. I don't know, maybe they are indeed the real vampires. Maybe these are the real vampires. Children of the night. Anyway, um, I digress. Don't ever be respectful of your editor's time is what it comes down to. If you can clean up some of that slop, please do so. Um, there are, uh, you know, there are instances where your editor is going to have a lot of different things on their plate. And you are just one customer, one client. Unless you're like Stephen King 
And I think even his editors probably have other jobs that they do as well. I, I don't know that, you know, you have an editor who's just doing one person because they can only write so fast, right? There's that yawn again. Um, the, the reality is your editor has families. They have obligations. They have skills scouting events they got to go to. They got to go to the, the ballet or whatever. I mean, I'm just throwing out random things now, but they've got stuff they need to do. Be respectful of their time. Don't, uh, uh, don't be a jerk. You're not the center of their universe. Even if you're impatient like me, be respectful of their time. It's really, really important. The next thing I hate about uh, writing is covers. You need a good cover. There's an old adage out there that says, never judge a book by its cover. The fact of the matter is we do. We do judge books by it, by their covers. Your covers should be reflective of the market and genre in which you're trying to operate. The title, selection, the name of the book overall, that all needs to be in line with what is really happening in the market at the time. Because of this, um, your cover is important. Hire a really good artist if you don't know what you're, you know, what you're doing. Um, I suck as a graphic artist. I'll be perfectly honest. However, recently I have been doing a couple of my own covers, and the people who bought them loved the covers. Actually, I, I have one for the app. There on the shelf behind me, it's the it's the one with the 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 vampire or the vampire bat. It's actually a fruit bat, but you know, it's a bat. Um, it's a lovely cover, and people are drawn to it naturally. And what I found is that uh, contrast works on horror novels. Uh, when you have a nice contracting co contrasting cover, that will get people's attention. So, I, I, I guess it's something you you live and learn. I have even gotten into the business of doing some covers for other people, but it's not my primary thing, and I'm never going to make this um, the sub primary. No, it sounds like I'm going to do professionally, but I've done a couple for people, and uh, they've turned out very well. Everybody's been happy, so that's what we strive for. If you are not a good graphic artist. Go out and hire somebody, like I said a little earlier. Now, you do have to cede some control there. You know, there's going to be some artistic license that goes into it, and uh, it's it's important. So, enough on book covers. The next thing I absolutely hate about being a writer is tracking book sales. Hate it. Hate all of it. Look, I became a writer to write, not track data. Um, the, I mean, I just wanted to sit down and like type out words and let somebody else worry about it. I, I don't have a staff that can do that. Uh, but you kind of have to track sales if you want to do better as a writer. you got to have an idea of how much you're selling of what and why. I've got two books that just don't sell, so I don't ever put them out anymore. Um Part of it, I think, is because the covers are bad, so I am planning to redo the cover. I just need to sit down and figure out what I want them to look like, reload the covers, call it good. Uh, I may give them new ISBNs because I may rewrite the versions a little bit. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, that is something that you really do need to uh, need to do. Um, you need to track those sales Business, business, speaking of business, next thing I uh, absolutely hate about being a writer is thinking of my, yourself as a, thinking of myself as a business person. Oh, I care, right? Um, when you are a professional writer, especially if you're an indie, you have to remember you're the CEO, the CFO, the, the CCO, the EIEIO, the BINGO. You're everything, man. You, man or, or woman, I'm sorry, equal opportunity here. Um, you are literally the everything to the company. And it's up to you to make all those things work. Make Do all the things, right? Um, 
it's very, very important. And all the decisions are yours. There's really nobody to help you. Eh, it's a lot of work, but, you know, you do it. Um, the next one's going to surprise you because I talk about this quite a bit. Uh, I hate going to conventions when uh, there's no actual customers there. If you talk to authors that do the convention circuit, many people will point out that that is just part of the game. And it is. It is part of the game. You're 100% right. Um, I, If you're going there and you're standing there behind a table and you're looking out at just another bunch of vendors sitting behind the tables, eh, that's not so great. Um, I... Um, yeah, I, I think that if you go to the shows, that's the only way you're really taken seriously. However, it's important to recognize that a lot of times at the bar or restaurant after, you know, the first night, that's when a lot of the work gets done by by uh, authors and, and publishers and, and editors. And you sit there and talk. Uh, you get to know people. Um, that's how I've gotten to know people like uh, John Hartness and... Um, and Ronald Melfi, uh, it's because I go to the, you know, things and I hang out with them and I talk to them and, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty great. You know, these, these are all great people and it's really nice to sit and talk with them, find out a little bit more about the business, what they got going on. And, uh, they're very generous with their time, really, really worth doing it. Now, now that I've said that I, I don't like going to cons like that, I want to specify that, um, so like I did a I did a con recently this year um, where there were not that many people there. The con was well run. It's just the timing was off. That's their biggest problem. So they learned some lessons. Uh, I think in general, the the con went over quite. I mean, it was good in terms of ticketing and getting people moved in and all kinds of stuff. They learned some lessons, and, and, and they'll move on and make it better. Um, I totally am going to do that show again, only because I want to see them grow. I want to see them succeed, because they put a lot of heart and soul into it, and I think their heads are in the right place. Uh, if you don't go off, or if you if you go to a uh, an event, and it's not going off as planned, here's my advice, right? No matter how bad the attendance is, don't bad mouth the con i've seen it happen um i am truly truly a believer that you should not be bad mouthing these cons there are there are authors out there that do it and um i i think that's um first of all it's a very poor thing to do it's not very professional to bad mouth a con um or other authors for that matter be professional. Understand that behind the scenes, there's always thing. There are always things going on that are may or may not impact the con at all. Um, but you know, th there are things that can affect the way the way these cons are, are run. So don't so don't badmouth them. Really is my point. Uh, I, I see it happen, and it kind of makes me shake my head. So it's fair to ask me, uh, Brian, Brian the writer, what is it that is your favorite thing about writing? If all of these things drive you crazy and make you want to jump out a window, if I jumped out the window, it wouldn't do me any good, by the way. It's only about a, I don't know, three foot fall and it's into compost, or not compost, but uh, nice, uh, nice soft ground. So I probably wouldn't do any real damage, but um, my wife would be annoyed because the window would be broken. Um, however... My favorite thing about writing, the thing that keeps me going, is that at the end of the day, I get to pull out my imaginary friends and play with them. That is the single greatest thing about being a writer that I can think of. You are getting paid. People are giving you money to read about what the imaginary people in your head did. That is so cool. Uh, and I love it. I love being able to bring that to my readers, um, my fans. And I do have some fans out there. Thank you, guys. Thank you, my fans. Um, but 
it's truly, truly an honor uh, to be able to do that. Um, let the little little voices in my head entertain me and entertain you guys from time to time. Uh, well, I need to send a huge shout out to the show's sponsor for this month. She's actually going to end up getting a little bit more than a month because uh, I didn't have that many shows in September. So I like to give people at least three shows. Uh, so she's going to get probably one more and then another one after that. Uh, just running a little bit behind. That's okay. It's it's uh, it's because I had a lot of other things going on. I was super busy. Oh Well, it's the way it works. I'm sending a huge shout out to the show sponsor this month, month Dale Kesterson. Uh, be sure to jump over to the Jumpmaster Press website and check her out. Check out her books. Uh, they're absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the, the Lauren K. Mystery Series is absolutely worth the read. I can promise you that. Um, as a matter of fact, I tell you what, um, let me just read you a description from the first book in that series, because I think it's probably worth uh, probably worth reading. All right, ready? I should do a dramatic voice for this. Lauren Kay. Okay. Uh, Lauren Kay, reporter of the Daily Gleaner, checked into the exclusive post-World War II Long Island Resort assigned to the right her first Sunday feature story while surreptitiously tasked to investigate a fatal scuba accident. Oh, boy. Her suspicions deepen when her own diving equipment mysteriously malfunctions. Robert Mallory, her mentor, calls in his friend, police captain Danny O'Brien, who reluctantly accepts Lauren's help to untangle the perplexing events at the new resort. Navigating jealous romantic triangles and evading precarious situations, Lauren must prove her skills to the veteran law enforcement officer and put herself in jeopardy to catch a killer who has already proven the will to resort to murder. Resort to Murder is the first book in the Lauren K. Mystery series. So go check it out. You can find it on Amazon as well. Uh, resort to Murder. And then you can actually, while you're there, buy the second book in the series. Come on now. If that is not enough uh, to get you to go out and, and buy it, I don't know what else will. The recommendation of Brian the writer uh, should should absolutely do it. Actually, uh, the recommendation, by the way, uh, of a um, an award winning author. Uh, we I, we were just informed here at All Things Writing that uh, I am a selectee for the um, the uh, Magic of Horror. Uh, film festival for a short film that I wrote, so I'm super excited. We will uh, we'll we'll see what the what the nomination brings. Maybe maybe I'll get a further award. Uh, maybe not. But either way, it's uh, it's an honor to be picked. Thank you, Magic of Horror. You guys are amazing. Um, all right. So thank you again for tuning in to All Things Writing. As always, I am your host. Um, Brian, the writer. We are almost at the month of October, so September, or so to remember to pick up those spooky, scary stories. We will be happy you did. I can suggest a few Crimson, the Crimson Tassels, Rhea Poke, The App, Codename Formula 12, uh, Dark Corners of the Old Dominion, which, by the way, is a new anthology that came out. Dark Corners of the Old Dominion is a charity anthology, so I don't make any money off that sale at all. It all goes to the wonderful people uh, at Scares the Care. This last weekend, I sold some of the books there, and I made uh, I, I made Scares the Care ninety one dollars. I think I think it was like ninety dollars and eighty eight cents. So obviously, I'm gonna just kick in the other twenty two cents and uh, and round it out. But um, yeah, I we were able to do some really good things for them. Remember, hit that like button or the follow button or whatever uh, so you know when the next show comes out. We're very, very excited to have a few new voices in the mix soon. More to come. Remember, again, we are shifting uh, to more of a YouTube platform by the end of the year. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to sort of manage everything, and and it just makes it a little simpler on myself and uh, 
I think it makes for makes for better uh, better podcasting anyway. But uh, all right, maybe I will play catch up next week by talking about what is going on and uh, what we're planning to do in the next few months. I really haven't talked that much about uh, the the horror uh, cons going on in the future. I should probably uh, give you guys a little bit rundown of what's going on on the East Coast. Okay. That's it for all things writing. Uh, For now, I am humbly yours, Brian the Writer, signing off.